On this installment of Building Blocks of Jazz, Phil Dunlap and his guest Nick Jost discuss the basics of the bass. Hi, and welcome to the Building Blocks of Jazz. My name is Phil Dunlap, and today we're going to talk the basics of the bass. And to help me explain a few things and demonstrate a few things, I've got a great friend of mine with me. Please welcome Mr. Nick Jost. Hi, Phil. Thanks for having me. Nick, why don't you tell us a little bit about the bass that you have right there? Well, this bass, sometimes called an acoustic bass, double bass, um, upright bass, can be played a handful of ways. The way I usually play it is with a jazz pizzicato, which is like that. But in classical music and in jazz music, you can see it play with the bow, which is called arco. And then like more of a classical pizzicato, which is a more mellow pizzicato sound. Well, Nick, you mentioned that this was an acoustic bass. Why don't you tell me a little bit about why it's acoustic? Well, if you notice, I'm not plugged into an amplifier. What actually produces the sound is the plucking of the string into this large acoustic chamber. So. There's no actual electronics involved here. It's all in-house. Well, Nick, it seems to me that the role of the bass over time has evolved from more of a supporting role to more of a role of prominence. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how that happened and who are the important players? Well, there are a lot of major players, but definitely one to be mentioned is a guy named Jimmy Blanton. Uh, he's actually discovered by Duke Ellington here in St. Louis, and he was one of the pioneers in that pizzicato that I showed you earlier, and also in just making the bass more of a solo instrument. And nowadays, it's very common to see uh, bass players as leaders of ensembles, uh, playing the melodies and actually at the forefront of bands instead of playing that supporting role. Why don't you show us a little bit of a melody uh, on that bass? Well, I'll play uh, Trichotism by a famous bass player, Oscar Pettiford. Very cool. Well, I see you've brought another bass with you. It looks like an electric bass. I can see a couple differences right off the bat and how you hold it. It's got five strings instead of four. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about this particular bass? Well, like you said, it's the electric bass and the electric bass because it utilizes the amplification. There's a handful of different ways to play the bass. Uh, you can slap. You can just a uh, regular pizzicato. You can get a more mellow sound by moving your hand around and also manipulating all these. Uh, there's tone controls and different things. So who was uh, probably the most famous electric bass player? Uh, definitely the, the name that brought the bass into legitimacy is a guy named Jaco Pastorius, which if you wanted to get a more Jaco sound, he played a Fender Jazz bass and he played behind, on the back pickup, which has... <laughs> That type of sound. Thank you very much for stopping by and sharing uh, a little bit about the basses that you have and the history of the bass. Why don't we play something using the acoustic bass yeah. uh, while we wrap this session up. So thank you very much for joining us here on the Building Blocks of Jazz. Tune in next time where who knows what great things we'll learn. One, two, one, two, three.